In this video series, we're going to talk about journal entries, uh, how to do journal entries, how to record accounting transactions, and by the end of it, you should be comfortable doing basic, uh, straightforward journal entries. That's the hope of this uh, section. Uh, and so whenever I start to talk about journal entries, I actually talk about physics at the beginning of my journal entries, and I talk about this guy specifically, Isaac Newton. Uh, he's a very, very famous figure. Uh, a very important person in history, uh, famously, and I think this is just an urban myth, that he was sitting under an apple tree, an apple fell on his head, and he said, oh, there's gravity, or something like that. I'm not exactly sure. Um, but when I talk about journal entries, I always bring up Newton for Newton's third law of motion. So let's see. Uh, laws of motion. There we are. So his first law says an object at rest tends to stay at rest. Uh, his second law is this formula, force equals mass times acceleration. But his third law is the one I talk, want to talk about now. It says, Newton's third law states that for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. And whenever I think about journal entries, I call to mind this new Newtonian law. Whenever there's an action in accounting, there's always a second action that's, that's equal in, in strength. And so... Uh, that's what makes balance sheets balance. That's why the accounting equation works, is because whenever one thing happens to one side of the accounting equation, something equal happens on the other side. And so um, maybe I'll illustrate that by way of example. Um, let's say I go to the Toyota dealership and I buy a car for $20,000. Um, so you're thinking, okay, well, that's wonderful. Uh, of course, my cars go up by twenty thousand dollars and that's absolutely right but of course there's another piece to the puzzle let's assume I, I bought the car for cash well then my company's cash would go down by twenty thousand dollars and all transactions are like this I mean there's not always something going up and something going down but there's always at least two things happening whenever there's a transaction so whenever you look at a transaction maybe you're presented with a problem or a transaction in real life you've got to look for more than just one piece of the puzzle one item isn't sufficient so we buy a car for cash our car goes up and our cash goes down and we've in a manner here on the, on the um, page we've we've recorded a transaction we said the car's gone up and the cash has gone down but in accounting it's not sufficient and it wouldn't make sense to have up arrows and down arrows on the page when we record transactions in accounting we use debits and credits and I want to run through the rules of debits and credits in this uh, part of the video so let me just get some fresh uh, paper. Uh, to understand debits and credits, you have to, have to, have to have a solid definition of assets, liabilities, shareholders equity. Oh, that's supposed to be an E. Sh uh, shareholders equity, revenues, and expenses. Let me just put revenues and expenses over to the side here. So, if you don't have a solid understanding of assets, liabilities, shareholders, equity, revenues, and expenses, I'll, pop, I'll make a link pop up right now to my first video where I define all of these terms. If you do have a solid definition, though, let's continue. So, we all know the assets equals liabilities plus shareholders' equity is the accounting equation. It's also really relevant for our rules of journal entries, and I'm going to refer to this screen all the time when we practice our journal entries. Uh, so I'm just going to draw some arrows now, and I'm going to fill out a little chart here, and I'm going to explain the chart in a minute. So I'm going to go up, down, down, up, down, up, and debit, credit, debit, credit, debit, credit. Okay, so I've kind of gotten into the chart, but I haven't explained it well. The, the, the initials DR stand for debit, and CR stand for credit. I looked this up online once, because a lot of students go, well, CR, yeah, that makes sense, that's credit. DR, why do you use DR for debit? And I believe it comes from either Greek or Latin root words. I mean, accounting's been a long for, around for a long time. 
uh, and, and so I believe it's just from a, a root Latin word, but it's something that stayed with us. So that's, I know my writing's messy, that's DR and CR, debit and credit, debit and credit. So as I said, accountants don't draw up arrows and down arrows when they uh, uh, buy and sell assets or when they record transactions, they record debits and credits. Um, the last ones I want to refer to are revenues and expenses. And in my class, this can be a pretty hard and fast rule. Generally speaking, it, it's pretty much going to be this way unless there's some sort of weird reversal. We say, well, if a company has a revenue, that helps the company's shareholders' equity. Uh, so if a company has a revenue, it makes shareholders' equity go up. So we say revenues are generally speaking going to be credits, unless there's some sort of reversal or something weird going on. But generally speaking, if a company earns a revenue, it'll be a credit. Uh, similarly, expenses always hurt shareholders' equity. Shareholders' equity always goes down when there's an expense. So expenses are generally debits. Uh, in a similar vein, dividends, that's short for divs, uh, uh, make shareholders' equity go down always. Dividends always take a debit. So these are the rules of debits and credits, but let's see how they apply. Um, we've got our purchase of a car for cash here, um, and so let's look at the car first. We've got to say, what is the car? And this is where knowing your definitions of assets, liabilities, shareholders, equity is going to help. We all know that a car is an asset, and we have an asset going up. So I'm going to look here. Asset going up. That means if I want to make an asset go up, I need to debit it. So hope I don't run out of space here. Uh, let's debit car for $20,000. Now, on your page, probably at the top, we're going to write a couple of headings. DR and CR, and we're going to write debits underneath the DR column and, and credits underneath the CR heading. So, we said debit our car for $20,000. Um, now looking at the second piece of this puzzle, we bought a car for cash, our cash went down. Cash is also, it just happens to be an asset. So cash is going down by $20,000. Cash is an asset, an asset's falling. We're going to have to credit cash by $20,000. Now again, your instructor or however you learn this may do it a little differently from me. But when I write my credits, I always act like if I was using a computer, everything's tabbed over a little bit. It's almost like I hit enter to go down to the next line and then I hit tab to indent. So I'm going to credit cash by $20,000. Now the most important part of this is not necessarily, I've seen some people write debit and credit right on top of each other. The most important thing is that the numbers are offset. Debits are on the left, credits are on the right. That's really crucial no matter who your teacher is or how you learn this. Debits go on the left, credits go on the right. So we've got debit car, credit cash. We have almost a perfect journal entry. We're missing a couple of things. First is the date. So I'm going to use today's date and uh, today's date is uh, January 15th, 2012. So I'm just going to go 1 slash 15 slash 12. And the other thing is we're missing a description. So I'm going to write a description beneath the journal entry. Purchased a car for cash. You don't need an exclamation mark. Um, so I'm just going to box this off and make it clear that, you know, the rest of this is just kind of stuff that was helping us. Right here, we have a good journal entry. We've debited an account. We've credited an account, and when you look at the numbers, our total of our debits column equals the total of our credits column, 20,000 in debits, 20,000 in credits. Uh, that's necessary. We've dated the entry. We've included a description, and you'll note there's no dollar signs at all in these journal entries, and I haven't included any dollar signs. So in my mind, at this point, we have a good journal entry. In today's series of videos, we're going to do a number of journal entries. The only way I think to learn journal entries is by doing them. So I've attached a worksheet, and you can see it in the notes below this video, um, and we're going to work through a problem or two uh, together, and we're just going to do lots and lots of journal entries. I, I really believe you should learn this by doing journal entries. It's not enough just to read the theory of journal entries, and I think I've given you a reasonably good uh, theoretical look at journal entries. Now let's actually practice them. Let's get comfortable doing journal entries. So that's going to be the theme of our day today, uh, and that'll be the theme of the next video. That's all for this video. Please 
Click over to the next one to get more examples of journaling.